In this video, we're going to be discussing a pediatric pathology known as congenital muscular torticollis, which is abbreviated CMT and normally just shortened to torticollis. When a baby is born with torticollis, it's born with a congenital shortening or a contracture of the sternocleidomastoid on one side. So if you look at this infant over here, this infant was born with a tight left sternocleidomastoid or a contracture of the left sternocleidomastoid. Now, if we think about the action of the sternocleidomastoid when it contracts unilaterally, it would promote ipsilateral side bending and contralateral rotation. And so if the baby's SCM here on the left is tight or it has a contracture, then the baby's neck will be positioned at rest in excessive ipsilateral cervical side bending and contralateral cervical rotation in accordance with the action of the muscle. And so for a left SCM that's tight, the baby's neck will be positioned in left side bending and right rotation. Now, torticollis is often associated with a condition called deformational plagiocephaly. We're going to be talking about that on the next slide. And note that this is the third most common pediatric MSK anomaly after developmental dysplasia of the hip and clubfoot, and it occurs in up to 16% of all newborns. Now, there are three major types of congenital muscular torticollis. The first is where there's an SCM mass, also called nodular CMT. And this is where there's a fibrotic thickening of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay? And you'd actually have a discrete palpable mass within the SCM muscle belly. Now in some contexts, this palpable mass is termed a tumor. This is an older piece of terminology. This has nothing to do with cancer. Okay? The baby does not have cancer within its sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay? In fact, you shouldn't even use this term in the clinical setting. You should use the term palpable mass. It has nothing to do with cancer. Now, as you might imagine, there's going to be a limited range of motion away from the resting position of the neck. So for example, with a tight left SCM, the resting position is left side bending and right rotation. And so there would be limited range of motion into right side bending and left rotation. And this is the most severe type of congenital muscular torticollis. The second type of CMT is muscular CMT. This is where there's literally just tightness of the sternocleidomastoid and there's no palpable mass. And that's what differentiates this type of CMT from the first. No palpable mass, so no tumor, just muscle tightness. And again, there's going to be limited range of motion away from the resting position, just as we described with the nodular CMT. Now the third type is the mildest form. This is called postural CMT and there's no palpable mass and there's actually no SCM tightness on either side. Okay? There's actually just a postural preference with no passive restrictions. And so the way you differentiate postural CMT from these other two is you would not find limited range of motion of the neck. The baby, for whatever reason, just has a preference for sitting in, let's say, left side bending and right rotation. Or vice versa, they have a preference for sitting in right side bending and left rotation. Okay? But there's no tightness, no palpable mass. And in this case, you would also need to rule out clipple fail syndrome and a brachial plexus injury that might be predisposing the baby to position themselves in that position. Now, about 90% of infants with CMT also develop cranial deformation, abbreviated CD here. And the most common type of cranial deformation is deformational plagiocephaly, which is a positional plagiocephaly in which a baby develops a flat spot on one side of the head or the entire back of the head. And this has to do with the chronic positioning seen in torticollis, for example, in left side bending and right rotation. And it really has more to do with the rotation. And so to understand that, I'm going to ask you a question here. Which side of the occiput is predisposed to developing a flattened morphology due to deformational plagiocephaly? So we have to imagine that the baby's going to be on their back a lot. Uh, it could be on the floor. It could be in their crib. It could be in a car seat. But the back of the head, the occiput, is going to be in contact with something. So stand with your back to a wall and put your neck into a torticolic position. For example, you could side bend to the right and then rotate your neck to the left and then back up so your occiput contacts the wall. Which side of your occiput is in contact with the wall? Well, it has nothing to do with the side bending and it actually has more to do with the side that you're rotated to. So if you had right side bending and left rotation like she has here, the left side of the occiput is going to be in contact with the wall. And so that's the side 
of the occiput that's going to be predisposed to becoming flattened. In other words, the side of the occiput in contact with the surface is the same as the direction of rotation, which happens to be opposite the sternocleidomastoid contracture. So in this example, we have a left SCM contracture. It's going to be the right side uh, of the occiput that's in contact with the wall and the right side that's going to be predisposed to becoming flattened. So the directionality of deformational plagiocephaly is named for the side of the occiput, which is predisposed for contact with the surface. So let's take a look at this skull down here. We're actually looking at a top view. Up here is anterior, at the bottom here is posterior. We can see that the right side of the occiput is flattened. So first of all, we would see ipsilateral occipital parietal flattening. Okay? The flattened surface of the occiput, that's the side of the rotation. So this would be associated with right rotation, that would also mean a left SCM contracture. Okay. This is also associated with contralateral occipital bossing. Bossing is another term for flaring out or sticking out. You can see in the frontal bone, there's going to be ipsilateral frontal bossing. And then the ipsilateral ear is going to be displaced anteriorly. So if an infant has left CMT, that would be due to a contracture of the left SCM causing a resting position of left side bending and right rotation. And the rotation is how we name the features of the plagiocephaly. So right rotation would cause right occipital parietal flattening, left occipital bossing, right frontal bossing, and the right ear would be displaced anteriorly. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.